Hello everyone, how you doing? Welcome to day number two. And so in day number one, we spent a lot of time getting all the hardware plugged in, getting it powered up, downloading the software to the SD card, getting that plugged into the Raspberry Pi, getting the Raspberry Pi turned on, all basic functional things that you have to do in order to be able to do anything moving forward. But I know that that takes time, especially if you haven't done that before. That's just, there's a grind to that process. The nice thing is once it's set up, then boom, you're ready to go from this point forward. You just click, simply turn it on and away you go. So for day two today, what I want to do is make sure you don't have as much workload because that's not fair and you'll burn out here right away. And I want to give you a little nugget of, of insight, a skill that I find to be super valuable when working with Raspberry Pi. And you may or may not use this now, um, but just to know how to do it and know that it's available is quite helpful. And this is creating a virtual network connection. Basically what this is gonna allow you to do is, as opposed to having a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse like I have behind me to do anything on the Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna be able to create a network where with, with my Raspberry Pi turned on, I'll be able to control it through my laptop, my desktop, wherever it might be. And so this is really nice. Sometimes I don't always always have the space to set up a full Raspberry Pi desktop station. There's other times where I've had projects where I've had my Raspberry Pi outside trying to take pictures of, of birds and animals, um, you know, kind of like with like a, um, a motion activated sensor. I've done some things where it's outside or just other places, not just sitting, you know, next to a power outlet all the time or a monitor. So I can go in there and I can then write the code and do things on the Raspberry Pi as needed. So this will basically take the Raspberry Pi screen that you see kind of vaguely behind me and put it right on your desktop so you can write your code, change settings, do whatever you need to do. So I'm going to have two videos. There's two different ways to do this. One is through um, the VNC, which I really recommend. And there's another way using SSH and Terminal, uh, which is also good. So I recommend you try one or both just to see what you like and uh, just see if you're able to figure it out because it'll prove to be helpful for some future projects down the road. Additionally, it can be helpful in the classroom because you could do this and then what you're going to be able to do then is project the Raspberry Pi screen on your overhead projector, say if you did a VNC um, through your desktop that you have at school, easier to put that on the projector than trying to figure out how to wire the Raspberry Pi to that as well. So just lots of things for you to kind of think about. So this one is really just, uh, there's two short videos, one six minutes, I think the other one might be 12, uh, that walks you through those and just to get you an added skill set. And then we'll move on into day three tomorrow. So I hope you enjoy. Check them out. Let me know if you have questions. Reach out in the Slack channel or however you want to connect with me. And uh, best of luck creating your virtual network connection. All right, my friends. Stay awesome. Peace.